Computer science is really cool, and so I just wanted to make a random video to show you a super interesting book. So we're gonna take a look at this super, super thick book in this video. It's called Encyclopedia of Computer Science, and it was edited by Anthony Ralston. And I'm just going through and trying to organize some of my books here, which is a never ending task. I have thousands, and I saw this one, I thought, whoa, this thing is huge. It's so heavy, I can, wow, wow, you can work out with this book. So let's take a look at what's inside this book. It's an encyclopedia, so it should have everything in it, or at least it has a lot of information. Let's see what it says here. The Encyclopedia of Computer Science is the first and only one volume basic reference for the layman, the non-specialist in computer science, or the specialist requiring detailed elaboration of a subject in which he is not an expert. Cool. All right, so let's let's take a look at the contents, right? So it's for non-experts. However, I don't think it's uh, necessarily light reading. <laughs> so looks pretty intense. 1976, wow, that was a long time ago. And computer science is relatively a new field. Um, I always think of that movie, Revenge of the Nerds. I don't know if you've ever seen that, uh, but Revenge of the Nerds, is uh, an old 80s movie and in the movie i am pretty sure that all of the nerds were computer science majors now this is before the internet so think about that right so they were they were stereotypically considered to be nerds and this is prior to the internet so it's kind of kind of interesting and it's very strange to even be involved in computer science back then i think because well there was no internet so it just wasn't as popular so let's take a look at what we have here engineering applications Engineering design. Formal languages. Yeah, computer science majors study this. And, and I'm pretty sure, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, so I know computer science majors take a course on discrete math, and I, and I don't have uh, a discrete math book here uh, within my reach. But they take a course on discrete math, and then they take a second course on discrete math, or a similar name, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they study this. This is something I've never done but it is something that is studied as a computer science major. And I think it's considered to be hard or challenging. Graph theory, this is something I've studied. So graph theory you can study uh, as a math major too. Some course, some schools have entire courses on graph theory or they will have uh, like a combined course. I took a combined course that was on combinatorics and graph theory. And honestly, like over, over half the class was computer science majors. So it's considered to be a really good elective if you're gonna study computer science. As you can see here, it's in the encyclopedia of computer science. I used to have a friend, he really loved graph theory. I hated graph theory when I studied it. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I, I like it now, but I remember being in the class and just not liking it. Um, I just had a hard time. And you know, Different types of math are like that. So if you're studying computer science or, or, or anything or math and you see something that, um, you know, you you don't like and you feel like, oh, this, this is not good, don't give up, right? There's different types of math. There's different types of computer science. A very technical book, right? Very technical book. What a thick book. I wonder if I have a discrete math book here I can show you because I know I have... I know I have, uh, uh, let's, let's go look over here, see if we can find some, some discrete math books. These are, these are other books I have. Let's see what we have here. I know we're talking about the thick computer science book. What's this, Mathematical Handbook for Higher Mathematics? No, that's not it. Yeah, I know I have some discrete math books. I was just looking at uh, uh, a discrete math book the other day, and there's just so many books here. Let's see if we have anything else interesting here. Group theory. Statistics, this is something computer science majors take, by the way, since we're talking about computer science in this video. Um, but they, they take just a regular stats class. This book is pretty good too, by the way. I bought this book at a bookstore, like at a physical bookstore for like $7. I gotta smell it here. I'm gonna give it a whiff. Oh, wow, oh my God, it smells incredible. It's got that yellow page smell. Stats is underappreciated. Statistics is really beautiful. And honestly, I didn't appreciate it until I taught it in college. Once I started teaching statistics, you know, once you get up there and you're like explaining hypothesis tests and confidence intervals to people, you start to really understand it and you start to really appreciate the power of stats. So 
Very, very powerful stuff. And I don't think a lot of people really understand the intuition behind a lot of the stuff there. It's very, very powerful because again, you can learn how to do everything, but like understanding it is key. So very good book. This is abstract algebra. This is not something computer science majors would do. Some random algebra book. A solutions manual for a mathematical statistics course that I took. What do we have here? Uh, analytic function theory, advanced math. A very rare calculus book. Louis Lightholt, by the way, I know we're talking about computer science, but there was a movie that came out in the 80s. It was called Stand and Deliver. And in the movie, uh, the guy was his teacher. His name was Jaime Escalante. And he was like this famous high school teacher who uh, basically got his entire class to pass the AP test or something, right? So he was a very, very famous teacher. And his inspiration was this man here. So these books are very rare, uh, the books by Louis Lightholt. I'm pretty sure he's on Wikipedia. Like if you look him up, I'm pretty sure you can, you can find information. Logic and proof. So that's kind of like discrete math, but that's, I mean, you do do some logic in discrete math, but that, that particular book is not very comparable to, to a discrete math book. So it's not a good, it's not a good comparison to show you. Let's see what else we have here. It's kind of fun just looking through books. Theory of substitutions by Neto. This is rare. This is really rare. This is really advanced too. This is really weird math. I should make a video on that. That deserves like its own own video. A book on trading. It says Modern Algebra by Van der Warden. Yeah, with the with the dust jacket. Wow. Wow, this is beautiful stuff. This this is this is like I love this stuff. Oh, oh I love abstract algebra. I I, I recently wrote a math book. And I haven't talked about Oh cool, look at this. Craft it. And I haven't talked about it because I, I had I bought it. I bought my own book. Let's take a look at this book. And uh, I want to check it for typos, right? So, yeah, once, once I check it for typos, I will uh, I'll, I'll mention it. So I'll make a video. I, I did write another book, though, this one. I wrote this book. This is really good. I'll leave a link. You should, you should get it. It's a great book, by the way. Um, it's just basically, it's called Real Superpowers That Will Change Your Life. So kind of cool. So this book here, this is something that computer science majors might do. So let's take a look at this, too. I know we were looking at the... Encyclopedia of Computer Science, but I got derailed. And so let's just keep looking at this stuff here. Medzi Bezat and Gary Chartrand. My friend, I had this friend, he, he passed away, and he was, he was really, really big on this book. It belonged to Michael Plummer, whoever that was. Sometimes these books belong to famous people. I have a topology book, and I looked up the guy who signed the book, and he worked for the Department of Defense. And I emailed him, uh, but he never got back to me. And then I found him on X on Twitter, but he hasn't been active in a couple of years. He's just some guy, um, but it's just kind of sad because I have his topology book from the 60s, you know? Memories, you know? Groups and subgroups, connected and disconnected graphs, Eulerian graphs. So this is graph theory, right? This is something computer science uh, people do. So since I started this video with a computer science book, I thought we should just keep talking about computer science stuff or related stuff hamilton graphs yeah graph theory was hard for me that's all i gotta say i i i took it as a combined course so it was like probability and counting and um graph theory so it was combinatorics and graph theory and i liked the combinatorics on the final exam i got every single counting question right every single probability question right and i missed every single graph theory problem i was just too distracted i had too much going on you know with my classes. So yeah, I can't believe I can't find a discrete math book to show you. Let's go back to this one. You know, I never showed you the contents. Let's just take a look there. So the contents are funny looking, aren't they? They're not really like, they don't scream contents. Okay, there's the Ford. Classification of articles. Okay, so that's, this, is what we have. this is what we have. This classification list includes all article titles except the five designated as broad disciplinary subjects. All headings that are not article titles are preceded by an asterisk. Okay. Programming languages, system software, a lot of stuff, right? Wow. I mean, you get a whole degree in this. People get PhDs. My initial goal uh, when I went to college was to get a PhD in computer science. That was... My goal, that was my dream. 
And I didn't do it, I switched to math. I switched to mathematics. Um, and it was a really tough choice. It took me a year. I was basically a double major. I transferred, and for a year I was undecided. I was like, I can't decide what to do with my life. Should I do mathematics or should I do computer science? So that's why I have all these computer science books and I think it's cool, you know? Because I used to be, for a short while, a computer science major. Also, like, oh, mathematics for computer science. We should look at that. Um, computer science is math in some sense, right? Like, there's a lot of math in it. It's an application of math, I guess you could say. Finite element method. I have a whole book on that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I do. I have a book on finite element method somewhere. I don't have... There's not many books. Oh, what's this? Mini computers. Oh, look. There's a person in the book. Honeywell Model 316 mini computer with memory of up to 32K 16-bit words. And there's a... She's working on that. That's cool. 1976. I wonder where that person is now, right? If, if yeah, it's crazy. I couldn't find the, uh, the mathematics. It's six. Let's see if we can find that. It's not, uh, they didn't give us a page number, I think. Well, here's some graph theories. We saw that, so it's probably around here. Flow chart. Yeah. Um, Problem-oriented languages. Yeah, I just want to show you this book. Random video here, just wanted to make a video for everyone since it's been a while since I've made one here, but kind of cool, really, really thick book, right? Super, super thick encyclopedia of computer science. What a ridiculous book. It's awesome. Anyways, take care, keep doing math. Uh, check out my book, where I put it, this book. I have, I have other books too, but I haven't gotten them yet. I bought them on Amazon because, um, you know, when you, when you make a book, uh, you have to actually get the book. So I still have to buy it. I have to buy it too. So I bought it and um, I think one of my books is coming tomorrow. So, But this is one I, I've written that's really good that can help you. So yeah, take care.